the tour that's going on right now is that more for the states? No, it's just like a, it's just like Spots. filling dates that you know you might have missed, and you know my wife's from Long Beach, so oh. it'd be nice to do it in her hometown. You know she would be repping Ninth and Elm. Throw that up there. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what you say? <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw that up, cuz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big Boys hey, Neighborhood, boy. beautiful day in the neighborhood, man. Our good friend Russell Peters yeah. is back in the neighborhood. Already talking a whole lot of mess. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, and, and before we get into anything about the shows, what's going down with 50 Years of Hip Hop, just what's happening with Russell, I do want to ask you, man, when you came, uh, we sent somebody downstairs to get you. Mm-hmm. And it was Ty Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Do you remember Ty Hollywood? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Do, where do you remember him from? Oh, is that? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the, the DJ for that uh, the, the the night I was like he looked familiar but I I had a I had a pleasant memory of him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over here, Ty. Get next get next to Ani over here. But I just wanted to make sure I put y'all back together in the same yeah, no, room, man. Good. He walked up. I, yeah. I, I checked his bag, made sure it was real. <laughs> <Right. He's>, uh, <laughs> was it? It's real. There it is, right yeah, there. Yeah, Ty yeah. Hollywood don't do that, man. That's yeah. why we call him Ty Hollywood. Yeah. That's right. I you said, know what I'm saying? I said that's a good copy, man. He goes, it's real. My girl made me get a real one. Yeah, man. I said, that's why you need a down-ass bitch who'll let you get some fake shit. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> Hey, man. How, did, are we good now? Because I know the yeah, travel going back and forth. Yeah, him. We were all good. Yeah, all right. He's just I, trying to pick scabs out. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. And I mean, I'm he did have a look on his face like, ah, oh, this motherfucker. Hey, man, but let me, <laughs> tell, you, let me tell you what's even crazy about it. We've been saying, man, Russell, Russell, Russell. So then we like, oh, Russell's here. Go down and get Russell. Before he's leaving, he looks in and he said, uh, Simmons? Like, no. Uh, <laughs> like, so D- you, Different you, scandal. Yeah. <laughs> he was going to go down there and look for some brother with his leg behind his head. Yeah. I just want to eat some oh, hot so yoga good. and do some vegan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, Russell, welcome back to the neighborhood. We good with you, Ty. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ty, hey, dude, Ty, Ty. Ty was looking hey, at me like... Hey, it was good to see you. Yeah, again. <laughs> So welcome I back didn't to realize the it was him. Yeah, well, you know, I, I mean, started, I was like, I, I seen this brother. He must work here again. You know I mean, why yeah. you didn't know it was him? Why? Because you talk so much shit. It's yeah, true. I do talk a lot of shit. You, you do leave, know that, Ty, right? I mean, you just leave dead bodies everywhere. You know yeah. what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like a homeless guy's underwear. I'm just full of shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> As you should be. How you been, man? Been working hard. Been working like crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. just with the pandemic being not over, but it's now over we're back. Now. No, it's not yeah. over. You know they said, <laughs> yeah. Who said they? The, the World yeah, Health Organization CDC. said it's over. Oh, really? It's, yeah. the, it's no longer. You a know pandemic. why? Economic reasons. They put us in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now they say, oh, it's over. Yeah. 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 Please, please, like, it's over. Hey guys, it's done now. <laughs> right. Come on back out. Yeah. yeah. Come on, come on out the bushes. Y'all can come out. Coming back in though, man. You you seeing the audience? You seeing people getting back out to shows? Mm-hmm. What everybody's that? on the road now? I know, man. Did your prices go up too? Hell no, everybody's prices dropped. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we're doing the same work. We're still getting less money now. Oh. I'm like, how does this work? Like, yeah, you're like, okay, I guess uh, I just, I I just did jokes. a big ass tour, like Asia and Australia and New Zealand and all these places. And I was like, ooh, it's going to be good. Got the check. I'm like, huh? <laughs> nah, half of this is missing. You're like, did they put Asia in there? Did the, I- <laughs> did the, I- the IRS already get this check? Did they? Hey, man, did you feel like when we were caught up in it, though, man, like you couldn't wait for that come out where because you, you're so used to having people at your shows. And then at one point, man, they try to do stuff where it's like, oh, we doing theaters. We doing drive ins. You could be in your car. We doing it over the, the Internet. I didn't like, do none of those. Yeah, man. But we did. Like, I remember when I did Abu Dhabi in uh, Damn. in uh, September of 21. And they had, it was like, I was the first guy, I was opening this arena there, the Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi, where eventually they started having UFCs there and everything. But I was literally, the day I'm doing the show, they're still taking the plastic off the seats, but they had everybody spaced out by like oh. three seats. So it was terrible. Like I look out and I'm, it looks to you as a comic, go, man, it shouldn't even sell properly. Damn. But they're yeah, like, it's sold out. I'm like, where? There's all these empty seats, <laughs> but they had. They spaced everybody out. Hey, man, did Abu Dhabi pay right at that time, though? Oh, yeah, they paid proper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, was, they, they got money over there. He was like, oh, this is all in my head. I can get this on my yeah, head. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> my ego's hurt a little, but I'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing that's this check won't repair. Yeah. You know? So you back out there, bro. Yeah, man. International comic, though. That's- yeah, I mean, but you know, the funny thing is everybody's going international now. You're welcome, guys. Right, right. Um, <laughs> it only took you a long time to figure it out. but Hey, man, but you've been one of those people where you go places that comedy usually didn't stop at. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. we, we'll see somebody like, oh, he's doing London. He's going to do the O2. And those are kind of given. Now, but you, yeah. yeah, you'll go places where I'm like. I was just in Tokyo. Um, I was How did in, that work out? Great. Um, I, they, I, I, <laughs> I do this joke about uh, people come up to me and say, you can't say the R word. I said, I, I was in Tokyo. I go, people came up to me and said, you can't say the R word. I go, hey, neither can you guys. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Do you you know you another you and Corey Holcomb get me nervous. Every time I like you, you laughed and stuck. Yeah, <laughs> Whoa, yeah. Now, now, what, what did you say? Canceled. Hey man, you never get concerned about getting canceled. No, because my intention isn't to hurt anybody's feelings. My intention is to make you laugh. Everybody's mm. feelings get hurt. Now. Dude, I was at uh, the Camarillo Outlets this weekend. <laughs> I'm at. Uh, uh, I won't say the name of the store, but if you have good balance. Right. Um, you know. <laughs> As opposed to an old balance. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm at the cash I'm checking out. I'm I'm paying and there's two young Gen Z kids there and and they're talking. Like they're checking cashing me out and there's and they're like and when an employee walks in, they go, Oh, and the guy goes, Oh, I haven't worked with him in so long. And the girl goes, Who, Enos? And I go, Ha! Enos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I go, they go I, I go, that's his name? She goes, Yeah. I go, Oh my God! What's his sister's name? Agina. <laughs> and, and I was laughing, and they both shut down on me. They both went like, they just shut up. And you know, he's really nice. I go, I didn't oh. say he wasn't nice. <laughs> like, you know, he was bullied. I go, yeah, his name's Enos. He right. should have been bullied. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good thing you didn't come with Enos, though. You know, Enos yeah, the I mean, penis. I mean, it's you, you, you got two ways of going with that name. You're either you're either the front or the back. You're either right. Enos, you're the penis or Anus. Hey, man, <laughs> do you write different now, or you don't care about? How your comedy is accepted? I, I, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I don't think about it right. when I'm doing it. it just Are there jokes happens. back in the days that scare you now? That you know, I they did? pull up something, yeah, from oh. 10, 15, 20 years ago. Oh, you got uh, listen. There, there's well, thank goodness they weren't really recording back then. Mm-hmm. But I remember I used to say some stuff on stage. We was just the way we spoke back right. then. Yeah, man. Literally, I mean, we, I, we wouldn't even refer to gay people as gay people, right? And right. I was like, I can't believe that's literally how I address these yeah, people. Yeah. Hey, man, I remember years ago when Eddie Murphy did Delirious. There was oh, a yeah. lot in Delirious. But everybody, yeah. And now if you but you go gotta, to. But you, you got to go back and look at it. It, it The intent isn't. Right. What, it, it, what people it, it, feel. It's what you're trying to make the intent to be. Yeah. The intent was just to make you laugh. And, and everybody understood that these words were just the words we were using at the time. Nobody's intention was to tear you down or nothing i heard that man we in our the 50 years of hip-hop bro you are a child of hip-hop i am what does this year of 50 years of hip-hop mean to russell peters well it shows everybody that rap was not a fad right come on now well in all fairness rap is one of the only thing rap and djing rapping and djing are the kind of like the only two things thriving uh together with hip-hop Sort of. I mean, the b-boying has gone a separate way. Right, right. Graffiti's gone a separate way. Right. But if we can get them all back together, if we can get the band yeah. back together. <laughs> Here, sign this album cover. We'll put the band back together for yeah. one night. It'd be great. I mean, but, you know, it'll it'll come back. Everything strays and comes back. When again. did you fall in love with hip-hop? What was your, what was your crossroads? And mine was be- was breakdancing. Right. So you did you breakdance first? I breakdanced first. Were so you saw, good at it? I, I You know, I thought I was good at right. it. Right. I was um I was no better than eh. Right. <laughs> Did you have your own linoleum, your own tile that no, you would bring? I, anytime I saw somebody would buy a fridge, I'd go steal their um the, car- the, the cardboard the, box. Yeah. But I remember the summer of eighty four, my front lawn was dead because it was covered in cardboard. Cause we lived right in front of the bus stop. From from So breaking. we would see me and my boys would see the bus come and go now and we'd yeah. start breaking. <laughs> yeah. hoping, hoping, hoping people were gonna get off the bus and go, all right. Yeah. Captive audience. You know, like, you know like, we, we were we were living in that breaking uh, you know yeah. and I mean breaking the movie, how corny it was. <laughs> That's what we were like, oh, be everybody's so gonna get off the and bus. And the white people are gonna be like, This is so cool. Wearing doing leotards and, 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 and <laughs> Yeah, wearing leotards and like little hot pants, like man, but you fell in love with it first, not even thinking. How long hip hop is gonna last? No, it was b. So it was, for me, it was b boying first, uh-huh. and then tagging, right? And then the music was the soundtrack to it all. Really early on, do you remember some of your first ones that you fell in love with, um, like <clears throat> music wise, hip hop wise? I mean, there was a lot. I mean, br- my brother used to DJ, so he played mm-hmm. disco, and then from disco, the funk came, and then the funk. The, there was like this. There was this world. There was this part of funk where people were rapping. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is that? We didn't know what it was. We didn't know it was rapping. We didn't know it was hip-hop. We were just like, 
Remember Wicca rap? Yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff like that. We didn't yeah, know what man. it was. Ultimately, four old man. It yeah. doesn't matter. And I remember that might have been. been the song that stuck out to me most because yeah, it's man. harder than the Calcutta song. Yeah. And I was like, my mom's from Calcutta. Right? <laughs> <laughs> They're worldwide. You bad mother, shut your mouth. Yeah, they yeah. might say, yeah. but you know the right way. Yeah, yeah. man, that's hip hop. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you you fall in love around that time. Yeah, I fall in love around that time. And then I remember I started getting uh, mixtapes. Mm -hmm. In like 83, I was getting mixtapes. I was 13, and I don't know how I was getting them. They just end up in my hand, and I'm like, what is this? And I remember hearing Pumpkin and the All Stars mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And then I was in England and I saw Wild Style. I was at my uncle's and he was bored. And he was like, go to the video store and get a movie. So I went to the video store and I see this. The cover? This, the cover with the graffiti. I go, what yeah. the hell is this? And I bring it home and I thought it was a documentary because it was so badly right. acted. <laughs> right. I was like, this, they can't Wait, be Wild Style wasn't a documentary? Yeah, no, right. <laughs> And then I watched Wild Style. I was like, "Oh, this is it." Yeah, and that man. was it right there. Yeah, I think that everybody around that time watched Wild Style. Yeah, you know, with Double Trouble. If you, yeah. if you want to know, want to yeah. know, like that was one of those things where even if you didn't have it, somehow you got that via VHS or Betamax, yeah. where that was like your introduction or something that you had to watch. Yeah, so for the love of the genre. What, what ruined Breaking and uh, everything for me was I saw Wild Style first. Right. Then I saw Breaking, and I go. Oh, this is like, uh, I don't know what this is yeah, like, but man. this is not like what I just saw. What about saw. Beat Street? Did you Beat Street kind of brought it back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beat Street brought it back. I was like, okay, so Beat Street is like the 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 uh, shined up version of Wild Style, and Breaking was like it's um, um, them, they, right. cousin. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> man. When did you start DJing? 85. 85. Yeah. Do you remember, was your first equipment, was it 1200s? Or no, you had, man. Yeah, man. I had SLB 200s. Bo two of them? Two of them. Oh, okay. They had the belt drive and the wheel yeah, for the nice. pitch. And I would, when I'd be queuing oh. stuff up, the, the belt would stretch <laughs> and fall off. And then my mom worked in Kmart, so I'd go with my dad to go pick her up from work, and then I'd go to the section where they sold the turntables i'd lift the platter off and steal Take the, the belt yeah man <laughs> hey man what about when when you didn't really catch it when you like and just go run that time yeah, yeah you're like, <laughs> well because because i used to my first two doubles were were uh the show uh -huh. so get i fresh. remember yeah so get fr i kept scratching get fresh crew and i remember going and it was like get <laughs> fresh crew yeah and then hey. I started cutting the record so much that it burnt out the yeah, word. Yeah, man, the So you get to that part, it would just go, oh. Yeah. And I was like, damn, damn. I can't even get the get anymore. Hey, man, <laughs> but, but that's like when you were so in love with something, bro. Like, I know about digging into the groove. Mm -hmm. I know about the, you know, getting the belts and, you know, your belt breaking or trying to sw swing back and, you know. And it's a different it's a different time now. Yeah. So, of course, we can't judge people by the way that we grew up. But I remember, bro, like, what it Going to buy records when you didn't the know what the of name them. of them were. The, yeah, coming in and I remember trying to find the nine hundred number. Right, right. I didn't know the name of it. Right. And I'm just going to the store and like, and the guy goes, "Feel the horns." I go, "Might be that." Right. It's got oh, a lot of horns man. in it. And I'm like, "No, it's not feel the horns." And I'm and I just kept trying to I just kept trying to find going. No, we don't. No. I think I know what that is, but I I remember going in Russell buying records just by the name. And yeah. then getting them home. Like now you can get so many different records. But I remember, dude, like um, it was uh, good times. Good times. Yeah. I remember, dude, I paid Chic. Yeah, $25 per uh, 12 inch. Because Where, it was hard. Do this? It, it was hard. This was like. And that has to be early. 78. This was early, early when they, when they had it on 12 inch. Yeah, it was on Atlantic Records. And you couldn't find them. Yeah. Back then. So, yeah. Oh, was, yeah. There was that. There was this time where the songs would get big. Then you would catch on maybe about uh, uh, six months too late, and, and when they you went to go get the record, they're gone. They they're didn't gone. make any more. Yeah. So then people would be like, "I got it." Yeah, uh, man. You want you want a copy? And you're like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, how much? You're like 25, 30 bucks." And because like, you remember yeah. when people records stopped, were four dollars back. They then. stopped giving you the whole like when people be like, "Oh man, could I get a copy of this so I can burn it or put it in?" People at one point people wouldn't even give you their records when we got a little more on the technical side. So let alone letting somebody borrow the twelve inch single, that that wow. stuff did yeah that that stuff did not happen, bro. No, you'd have to I I you'd have to be good friends with the DJ. Be like, yo, I'm playing a party this weekend. You got this record? You got this record? Yeah. yeah. Can I borrow it? Yeah. Okay. Bring it back. Don't yeah, fuck my shit up. Yeah, you gotta bring it back. Yeah. 
And, and, and then when they bring it back, you do like this. Like, yeah. <laughs> make yeah. sure it's not scratched. Scr- don't, don't, yeah, don't scratch with my record. That's what they tell you. Don't scratch my record. Don't scratch my record. Don't scratch my record and don't scratch with my record. And and that's a whole different world, man, just, just coming up in a time like that. Then when you look at us now and it's 50 years of hip-hop and see what hip-hop has created as far as, like, the biggest genre, the opportunities. We 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 created more million and billionaires from this genre. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's just one of them things. When you said how we went from disco to like this funk thing, mm-hmm. that's why people thought like this is a fad. Mm-hmm. This isn't going to last because disco. Because it was coming off of disco. Yeah. And disco didn't last. You know what well, I'm saying? The thing is disco spawned house. Mm. And then house spawned EDM. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so the evolution. I mean, disco of. is like the is the is the is the is the father of all this, the, or the mother, or the whatever. <laughs> right, <It's> a, <laughs> related to it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, it, it made it. Hey, why do you? And even when I said the evolution, right? With the evolution of hip hop, why is it important for you to show certain bodies of hip hop? to like a Netflix or to, you know, a Canadian audience? Why, why did you feel like you want to do executive producing on some of these great stories as well? Well, because everybody sees the tree nowadays. Mm-hmm. And nobody, nobody saw the tree being planted. Right. And nobody cares about, like, what was there before. There was nothing there before the tree. They just see a tree and they go, there's a forest. And they go, that's a forest. I go, but before that forest, somebody had to plant these trees. Right. And I want to show that there was, a, there was just a field. And then somebody took the time to irrigate it. And then, you know, these this is all over time. And this is a process. What do you feel about people that were going to the forest and piss on the trees? I mean, that's what we call the new artists. Right. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. Be- because I'll you're, see You're them. the one who puts them on your show. Right. <laughs> well, you're here. <laughs> I know. No. I'm here to put this piss out. Right. <laughs> but no, you'll see where, and, and that's not to everyone, but sometimes I'm like, man, People don't understand what was here before and what the love of of hip hop was before and where we are now. People that didn't have and it wasn't about, oh, they didn't have great deals because they they just didn't have great deals. There was it because we weren't sure what the future of it was. Right. Right. Man. We're just happy to be doing something. You got to think like our generation is the is like the generation that saw so many things being birthed. Right. We saw hip hop being born. We saw. Uh, 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 disco be born. We we saw house and EDM and all that stuff being mm-hmm. born. We were there for it all. I remember right. I used to play house because in Toronto we would get everything from America. We would get the hip hop from New York because uh, it was only it was right there. New York was right there. Chicago was New York and Chicago were both eight hours away. New York City was eight hours from Toronto. Chicago was eight hours from Toronto. Then we get all the stuff from Miami. Mm-hmm. It would come straight up. That everything was coming straight to us. It was funneling to us. Then we started getting the West Coast stuff. Right. And, like, we didn't know. Like, I just knew Todd E.T. had a dope name. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I thought it was because he was wearing Todd One clothing. Right. Remember Todd, right. Yeah. Remember Todd you, One? You was like uh, Batteram, huh? Yeah. And we we're like, and I heard it. I was like, well, maybe not. How but, does that get up to you, though? You know, because somehow it, just it landed up. in your hands, though. There was a radio show called Fantastic Voyage in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Guys, this guy named Ron Nelson. He, was, uh, he started it. It was a college radio station. He started in, like, 82. And he started playing hip hop back then on Saturdays from one to four. And That's crazy. When we just had time slots. Yeah, one to four on every Saturday. The Fantastic Voyage pro- program with Ron Nelson, and uh, it was in downtown Toronto. But I lived in the suburbs, twenty five minutes out, so you wouldn't be able to pick up the signal. But we figured out a way to disconnect the cable from the TV and tape oh it to the God. antenna and find it on another channel. Uh, so it'd be on eighty eight point one if you were in the city. But where I was, it was like ninety two point three or some stuff, right. and then you you tape you tape the uh, cable to the to the antenna, and then we'd hit record. Were there any <laughs> artists back then? You know how like you could say, oh, West Coast came, Miami was going down, and Toronto. You look at you look at hip hop now, and it's like Toronto. You're like, oh, okay, there's some great talent that come out of Toronto. Yeah. Was there any homegrown at that time? I mean, we had a lot of underground cats right. that were really dope. There was a guy named Kenny Crush. Like there was mm-hmm. all these guys that. But everybody was just doing it because it was they fun. They loved it, yeah, It man. was like, it was just a fun thing to do. Nobody thought there's a career in it. Maestro Fresh West was like the biggest one we had mm-hmm. in like 89. Why do I know that name? He had a song called Let Your Backbone Slide. Oh, shit. Okay. And um, he kind of sounded Kane-ish mm-hmm. with his uh, voice and everything, or his, the way he would rhyme. But he was dope. And um, and then he was like our first big one. When did you come to the States? Uh, like to live? Yeah. Oh six. Oh, okay. So, 
So you had already had that love for it, and already, oh, yeah, was, already been traveling and seeing it around the world. Yeah, and I and I was, you know, I already had a radio, I had a hip hop show. Yeah, I was so, a co-host of a hip hop show in Toronto. Who did you guys have up there? Me, it was me and Mastermind. I don't know if you know Mastermind. I don't know. Man, it was the Mastermind Street Jam. I was the co-host. I was the one that got us in trouble all the time. No, not you. You must have been <laughs> different back then. No, oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like when I got, we got bad, we got mad calls when Big Pun died because I made a joke. I said, "Oh no!" I said, "It's a sad day for hip hop and an even sadder day for the pallbearers." That's what I said. <laughs> but everyone was like, "That's not funny." I was, you know, I was trying to le- bring some levity to the situation. You know. <laughs> y'all stick around, y'all radios. We got Russell Peters in the neighborhood, Big Boy's Big neighborhood, boy. Long Beach is. Terrace Theater, June seventeenth, bro. Correct a mundo, as Fonzie would say. Oh, correct a mundo. Hello. Now, uh, why are you doing comedy in the states? No. <laughs> <laughs> what does it feel like to be back, not back at home, but in, in Long Beach, man? Are local shows different from from shows like traveling and even in your international shows? I mean, yeah, of course, you're in America now, right? But I'm talking yeah. about ticket wise, and I mean, everybody's a little different. Stuff. You know, you got yeah, there's a lot more competition out here. Mm-hmm. You got, you know, I'm not I'm not a big fish in a small pond anymore. I'm I'm a regular fish right. swimming around <laughs> with the rest right. of the fish. Hey, man, have you been a lot of places where they will thank you? For coming and doing comedy there because comedians don't go there or and have you heard a lot of this is the first time? Oh yeah, I heard yeah. a lot of that. Uh, you know, I was in Taiwan on this last tour. I did a show in Taipei, so that was kind of cool. And then when I went to Malaysia to do shows, they they all credit me as the guy who brought comedy to Malaysia. Damn. Like they'd never seen comedy until twenty years ago. Do you think about and it was mine the material though? Is it is it like okay? I know that this will work here. But it probably won't work there. Or do you? Do they know that they're coming to see Russell Peters and no, you give them the show? They know what they're coming to see. At this point, they know right. what they're coming to see. What about countries, man, that you can't do certain things? I won't go. If you tell me I can't do something, I, I can't go. Right. You, I can't have my hands tied when I'm on stage because that's I'm the kid in class with don't make any noise. I'm like, all right. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm not going to, but she's going to because right. I'm going to make her laugh yeah. to make some noise. Man, so you'll go somewhere as long as you know, like, dude, I could be Russell Peters here yeah. and w- without having to, like, cut my show. But what about, like, countries where they're a little more strict? Well, a little more strict and you just have to understand the rules. Right, you right, don't ever, right. Like, in certain countries, you don't ever, in under any circumstances in any country, never talk about the royal family of that country. Gotcha. Ever. Like, you want a surefire way to get thrown in jail and possibly never see your family again? Mention the royal family in a negative way on stage. Hey Amen. But you know what, though, bro? It's like a lot of comedians or performers, they don't understand that because we or they haven't been there. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. a whole different set of rules that people don't know. Well, again, a lot of guys do comedy in such a way that it doesn't cross over to certain people, you know? Mm-hmm. I did Europe last year. I did countries I never thought I would. I did Portugal. I don't know what I was doing in Portugal, but I had a good time. I had a good set. You <laughs> right. know what I mean? But I was like, Portugal? These were the people that got mad at me when I did a joke about them like uh, 15 years ago. You was like, man, I'm not going there. They, they, you yeah. know, that revenge is probably served cold. Yeah. I was like, but the, the funny thing is now, like, because the, they started getting real racist on me when I made a joke about them. They started like messaging me, like, you Indian dog, we used to own you. And because they had colonized India at one point. And I'm like, Whatever. Well, that was 500 years ago, stupid, mm. right? And the, so, like, a lot of the revenge is coming back around to all these other countries. You know, in, uh, England has an Indian prime minister now. Right. He's an Indian guy from England. And um, Portugal, their president or prime minister is Indian as well. You're like, ah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, well, well. <laughs> I believe you were saying something. Right. <laughs> Book me in Portugal. <laughs> hey, man, did you do that? Did you watch that, uh, what is that, that King, the coronation? No. For, no? I would no, think you I, would. No, why would I watch that? Why? Because. Well, because you're, you, you're from Canada, uh-huh. and you guys... Uh-huh. The queen's on your money, uh-huh. and now he's your king, right? I, I, I didn't or design the, the money. Of, I don't know. I mean, I met. Listen, I have but a picture made of me and of Prince Charles from oh. uh, from uh, two year, three years ago. Three years ago, I met him, what and, was and that he was like? very, very nice. I'll say this: he was very nice. And we were. Wa- I have a video where him and I are walking and talking, and Camilla's behind us. And I, I said to him, "I go, hey, sir, do you want your wife to walk beside us?" He goes, "Oh no." 
I was like, wow. I was like, wow. Like, All right, let me take that down as a note, too. When I visit these countries that the women don't want to walk, you know, want his wife walking next to him. Yeah. I was like, she was like right behind us. I go, sir, I, I mean, do you want your wife to walk with us? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he was asking about the, remember the series I did, The Indian Detective? He goes, so tell me about The Indian Detective. That's how he talks. Right. <laughs> and I was like. How did those worlds come together? Were you at like a I was ceremony doing, or no, dinner? I was, I was doing some show. It was a charity show. And for some reason, Prince Charles was there. And uh, Katy Perry was there. It was me, Prince Charles, and Katy Perry were like. She mm. was at the coronation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She, apparently yeah. she had a better impact on him right. than I did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's mad as hell that the prime minister's Indian now. Yeah, that's right. yeah. You're like, do not bring that dude over here. <laughs> Don't bring the Indian detective. <laughs> he was probably like, oh, yes, Russell, Russell. I love Russell Simmons. They're like, Peter, oh, no, not that guy. Uh, not yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrong not, one. Not that guy. <laughs> so the tour that's going on right now, is that more for the states? No, it's just like, like filling dates that, you know, you might have missed. And, you know, my wife's from Long Beach, so oh. it would be nice to do it in her hometown. You know, she would be repping Ninth and Elm, throw that up. <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> <laughs> what you say? <laughs> I'll throw that up, cuz. <laughs> Oh, man. Would it, would it be a lot of her friends there? Like, I mean, she's Filipino right. and it's Long Beach. Yeah, there'll be a lot of her. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that's a whole kind of different. That's what I was asking about being at home, man, is the request a little different because everybody like wants to go. Have you been to places, man, where you know your guest list is going to be real small because oh, yeah. you don't know anyone? Yeah, I'd be walking around malls. You want to come to my show? <laughs> I'm like... I go to buy some shoes. They're like, thank you. I go, oh, are you from America? Yeah. What are you doing? I have a show. Do you want to come? <laughs> and I'm like, I'd love to have somebody on my guest list. <laughs> hey, man, do you do your shows do well in all these places? Yeah. That's it's su It surprises me, too. I'll be honest with you. Even when I show up, I'm like, I don't know how we're going to try and do this again. But, you know, I just did Australia, and it was all sold out the whole tour. We're doing 12, 13,000 people a night. I'm like, damn. Still, huh? But even when you say you was like Portugal, you were like, oh, I don't know. Like that, you get there, or not that you're nervous, but you get there. Do you wonder about the number? Like, man, are people going to come out tonight? Yeah, I'm like, I, I've never thought about coming here. I never thought about people speaking enough English. But then you go there and everybody's speaking English. You're like, hold on a second, America. We got to stop our propaganda. Right. Because right. <laughs> America's starting to act like, you know what America's starting to act like right now? It's America is acting like the hot girl in high school. Who at the thirty year reunion you see her and she got like four kids from six different dads mm -hmm. and uh, right and, <laughs> hey, do and, that and she fat and she's on welfare and she's still acting like she's the bad bitch in high school. You're <laughs> right. like, oh, calm yeah. down, bitch. <laughs> it, 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 you, nah, nah, you got the same name, but you ain't her no more. <laughs> right. calm, calm down, Thunder. <laughs> yeah, calm, 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 calm down. Hey, man, have you been to the uh, the Rock Nation brunch? No, nah, I've never been invited to that. Damn, man, what the hell is going on with Dude, us? Dude, I, I watch a lot of things and I go, all right, because. I see who I, I who you know I I look at I look at it as there's the phonies in the game mm -hmm. and the phonies are always going to rise they're always going right. to move ahead the more fake you are the more forward you're going to get right but I can't play the fake game at all you know what I mean I just can't do it so you know my crew is the foundation guys right right and right. I'm, I'm I'm with all the brothers that started it and and. You know, these are all the guys that those guys at Rock Nation respect. Right. But they ain't inviting them either. Mm. Wow. Mm. So I'm like, yeah. I'm going I'm to I'm ride with these guys. Yeah. Hey, man, let me. And the reason why I ask, man, because I don't know what it's turning into now, but I've never been invited. You know I've what never saying? been invited. And I look who gets invited. I go, what the fuck they got to do with it? <laughs> yeah. How hey, did man. that guy get there? Hey, dude, I asked <laughs> LMA. She was in the neighborhood. And I was like, we were talking. I said, yeah, I've never been invited. She was like, really? So like there was way less famous people there than you. I was like, is that a compliment this or I don't know how I, yeah, well, I'm supposed to take this, but yeah. but yeah. And, and then I just had LL Cool J. And, and, and Does LL go to it? Nah, nah. And he LL said LL don't that, go either. He said he think that it was like years ago he laughed at Jay Z in a battle or something. And he was like, yeah, just because I laugh, I can't get no brunch. And he said, nah, he yeah. said he's never been invited. Marlon Wayne's never been invited. Oh, so we're good then. Yeah, so. <laughs> you know, I don't feel bad about right. it. You know what? We need to have our own damn brunch. Yeah, exactly, man. We'll call it yeah. Big Brunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this be us? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll do it we'll right here. Marlon, yeah. LL. Yeah, we'll be at Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Sherman Oaks. Yeah, hey, amen. But yeah, I was like, all right. And, 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 and it's crazy because I never even thought about it like, oh, it hurt my feelings or, you know. It's just now it's turning into something. Mm. 
Where, yeah, I look at it and I go, huh? And I see everybody like posing. I'm like, what? What does that person have to do with that? <laughs> what have they done for the yeah, culture? Yeah, man. They don't care. These are culture vultures. Yeah. Culture so, vultures. so it is what it is. Yeah, we, next year it's Grammy time, right? It's around the Grammy time. Yeah, yeah like make sure we do something. Let's we'll do make it. sure you so wherever well, you're gonna do, be let's at, do our own shit. Czechoslovakia, wherever in the world you're gonna no, no, be. We, we, I'm gonna be here. Take that time off. You and I are gonna relive 30 years ago, and you're gonna kick me out of a limo. <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> hey man, for those he said that you know 30 years ago, I kicked him out of the far size limousine. Right. Which you know, I, what, rightfully so, in all fairness. Right. Yeah. And, and a, he was doing his job, and B, boom. I don't know why I was in his limo. <laughs> there it is, right there. All right, <laughs> Russell Peters in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. Child of hip hop, Mount Rushmore. Hmm. Who's on Russell Peters' Mount Rushmore? Let's, and we're going to extend it. Let's so do like Mount five Rushmore or six. has four heads on yeah, it, right? Yeah, that's why. So let's give one to each element. Oh. Hmm. Oh. That's dope. You're going to make it even more difficult. Right. Okay, let's start with Crazy Legs. For breaking? For breaking. That's for me. I mean, people will argue and dispute it, but Crazy Legs was the first person I saw that made yeah, me go, man. that is the coolest person I've ever seen in my life. And now me and Legs are like this. We're like he he spends New Year's at my house every That's year because his birthday's on January first. So he, he, it's dope. Like you know, this year we had a little New Year's thing, and then I battled him right at midnight. Hell and yeah. uh, well, it was a him? fake battle. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. I just top rocked and, and ca called him out. But you know, it's hard when a fifty-three year old guy's trying to battle a fifty-seven year old guy. Right. You know? <laughs> Yeah. It's a little different. Yeah. Up. We're 110 years old. <laughs> yeah. Collectively. Something. Yeah, any one of our ages right now, you put in the microwave, your yeah. food is going to be warm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, it's going to be too hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got crazy legs for the element of hip hop with breakdancing. Um, uh, for graffiti, that's a tough one. I mean, you could go with FaZe mm -hmm. or you could go with Dondi. You know, there's a lot of people you can go with. Uh, so that's a tough one to call. I don't know enough about that world. Gotcha. So I will go with one of those names that I do know. Okay. Uh, for DJing. Ooh. Mount Rushmore of DJing. Ooh. That's a tough one, man. Because DJing is very personal to hey, me. Hey, man. And, and I it's walked hard. in there before I walked in here. Right. You know that, right? <laughs> right to the DJ booth. Yeah. I was like, let me let me get busy with you. It's hard to pick one for DJing. So let, let's do a Mount Rushmore for just DJs. Okay. So it'll have to be... Uh, Grand Wizard Theodore. Say that. Because he created the scratch. Yes, sir. Um, then you'd have to go with, um, let's go with uh, Jazzy Jeff. Yes, sir. Uh, for the 80s, for what he did then. Well, I see that's but it's always a it's a it's a it's a it's a slash. It's Jazzy Jeff or Cash Money because they mm. were same city, same time, same type of cuts. And so you, I got to give them a, a, a shared. Okay, and space. you're going with Jazzy Jeff from then. And now? And now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, so that makes you know. it a little, yeah, all right. And then uh, we'll go with DJ Qbert. Yes, sir. Because he came in and just completely changed the game. He introduced a lot of people to the way that he cuts. And when you think about the world battles and the seminars and Supremes, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then I got to go with my uh, my old tour DJ, R.I.P. DJ Spinbad. Yes. Just for being so ridiculously innovative with his cuts and his mixtapes and everything. So if you ever got a chance. How long did you and Spinbag go tour together? Man, he well, we were friends for a long time, but he was with me from around 2008 till, you know, till, till he died. Damn. So we got Jazzy Jeff, we of got course. Theodore, Grand Wizard Theodore. Jazzy Jeff, Cash Money Slash. Slash. Um, Qbert. Yes. For, in, for just what he did. And then spin bad because hey, that's man, a personal. You're gonna get in the car and you're gonna need another four. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. All right, yeah. MCs. MCs. It's the final countdown. Um, well, Biggie will always be my number one. Mm -hmm. That was just always. That's forever. What um, about before Biggie? Um, before Biggie, who was before Biggie that I used to really dig? I mean, LL was always there. Yeah, man. I mean, Cube's first. Four or five albums were ridiculously yeah. dope too, but again, I can't listen to them now. I'm not. I'm not in that angry headspace anymore. <laughs> right. You yeah. know, I have kids. I don't want to hear your daughter was a nice girl. Now, now she, she is a, a slut. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Want, I don't want to play that with my a kids. Queen, in the car. Just yeah. like King Tut, yeah. gobbling up nuts, sort of like a hummingbird. Fucking. 
sucking up the lynch mob crew and I'm coming third. Like, yeah. yeah. Hey, man, and when you have kids now, yeah. Nappy Dugout is a whole different song. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, no. Nah. When you have a daughter, like, oh, Yeah, no, yeah, no. my daughter's 12. I don't want her. Yeah. Yeah, no, right. I'm good. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, Cuba, you, you hold some strong you, memories you, for that's me. That's when you like, I we, unfortunately... we're put on Are We There Yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. that'd be her Ice yeah. Cube work. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, so, we got, what do we got there? What do we got? We got Biggie. Um, we're all over the place, though. Yeah. A big L. Yes, sir. Rest in um, peace. And not because he's one of my best friends and lives with me, but Lord Finesse. Yes, sir. Because his voice, just the lyrically, and, and, and listen, as a DJ, producer, and as an MC, Finesse could be on three mountains. And not even um, credited enough. Not at all. Those that know, yeah. know. Yeah. All right, go ahead. And then we got one left. Yep. Mm. Ooh, this is exciting. I'm going to go with uh, Chuck D. Really, though? No. <clears throat> because he was doing all that stuff in the 80s, um, conscious. Yeah. But, like, he had that authoritative way of doing it where it didn't feel like he was preaching to you. Right. It was just Amen. like it was like having a dad tell you some, kicking some knowledge to you, and you're like, I like the way yeah. this, you know? Hey, dude, do you ever trip off of, like, when you would see, like, Public Enemy or you would see people that used to go to their shows and the content? And then you look at this whole white audience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm a, I'm a the follower I'm, of Farrakhan. Yeah, Elvis yeah. was a hero to most. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a brown kid, so I'm like in the middle. I'm like, all right. I like the way this is going. <laughs> yeah. right. I wanted to learn the S1W step. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, you know what's really in. dope? Last year I was flying in New York, right? My wife and I were on Delta, flying in New York. And uh, it was like one of those early morning flights. It was a red eye. And we get to New York. When I got on the plane, this dude sitting behind me had a mask on. And uh, and uh, he looked at me and said, what's up? You know, I go, what's up? And then I sat down. And then during the whole flight, everyone's sleeping. This guy's kicking me in the back of my chair. I'm like, this motherfucker's kicking me the whole flight. Then we land, and I open the overhead space, and there's a bag in there. I go, is this yours? He goes, nah, Russ. And I go, and I'm like, okay. And, I, and then he pulls down his mask. It was Chuck D. Oh! <laughs> oh kicking you the whole time. That's dope. <laughs> and I go, oh, shit, Chuck. I didn't right. know it was you. <laughs> Sorry, legend. <laughs> Kick me again. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. And, you know, you're going to get arrested when you get off the plane. But I, 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 I apologize. We have a hostile on board. <laughs> hey, 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 man. But you know what's crazy? My daughter just fell in love with Public Enemy from the, what was that? What was the award show that the just Grammys. went down? Mm. The Grammys that just went down when they did that 50 That was years. dope. They missed a lot of people, but it yeah, was dope. And, but LL also said going in, we're going to miss some people. You know, mm -hmm. because be, if, if you were to put together something like that, bro, who would be on your 50th anniversary, like the celebration? I mean, I would, you know, I would go chronologically too, the mm -hmm. way they did it. Um, I'm happy they had Mel on there. Yeah, man. You, you know, Melly Mel was my man. Melly you know? Mel, that dude don't buy shirts, huh? No. Them no. shirts are over. You know what's funny is I make fun of him all the time. One time, because he wears all the uh, that spandexy kind of Yeah, uh, well, rat. he's working for it. Well, in in, in, in jiu-jitsu, we call them rash guards, right? right. But <laughs> he's wearing, like, because it, it protects you from getting a rash. So it's like all that skin tight stuff. One day we're in New York. He's wearing an all red one, like red muscle, like that skin tight shirt, and then a red suit, and red hat, and yeah. red pants. And then my friend Yoshi goes, Hey, he doesn't know who Mel is. He goes, hey, Mel, you look like one of the Incredibles. <laughs> oh! Already? <laughs> Legendary. So if you were to put together that show, <laughs> chronological order, there was an edit that, yeah. that was uh, not appropriate. Yeah, for, definitely for my not appropriate. Yeah. Well, I don't want to cost you your friendships. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Things so, are already strained with me, you, and Ty. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to do something like that, Russell, who, what show do you put together? Well, I, I would want to do something where I recreated uh, the, the party that happened at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue in the Bronx where hip-hop was born that yes, night. Yes, sir. Uh, so I would have Cool Herc there. As you should. Uh, we won't let him DJ because that's not so good. Right. Um, oh, wow. I'm not going to uh, say anything. Well, you know what's funny is I text Herc last night, <laughs> and I'm a little annoyed <laughs> Because I texted him to tell him, uh, you know, congrats on the. Uh, Why? Well, and then I got a. I, got, I guess he's on an Android. I got a message. Unable to receive message. Message blocking is active. I'm like, you son of a bitch. Message <laughs> blocking. But he's not blocking you, though, right? No, That's I just think, something that popped up. I don't know. Up. I'm going to call his sister today and be like, what's up, Cindy? Yeah. Um, Did he go to your wedding? 
No, no, he didn't go to my. Maybe that's why he blocked me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I still accept your calls, even though I wasn't invited. I know. I, Between explain. the brunch and I, I know why you didn't invite me. Yes. You know what I'm saying? This guy. Look at this. Busy B just texted me this hip hop 50th anniversary show he's doing. Where's that at? In New York. Uh, Do you feel like you're going to make it to a lot of these shows? Because I think a lot no. of these are starting to come. A lot of them are now to become repetitive now. Yeah. Like there's a lot of the same people on the same bills in different cities and. And I'm like, I don't know who these promoters are. Like, they should have, Live Nation should have jumped on this, put together a tour, and yeah, then just, man. and got everybody paid. And you see, LL got his fourth tour. It'd be LL, Dougie Fresh, Slick Rick. <clears> like, yeah. he, he got one that, that he I mean, put LL's in, you know, got in a position to do that. Right, right. You know, I mean, that Rock the Bells radio thing is really working well for him. Hell yeah. Why do you want to do it? You... Rock the Bells radio? No, nah, just uh, the show. Put on something. I, I've done them. You know, matter of fact, okay, so... I think in 2000 and either six, I think 2016 or 17, I did a show in Montreal called The Mixtape Live. And it had, I had Spin Bad and Starting from Scratch on four turntables, as I usually do. And so the way I had it planned was they're just going to be playing because we were doing a, a free party in the park. It was 20,000 people came out and they were playing and I'm hosting it. And I had Melly Mel come and host it with me. Mm -hmm. So they're playing and I go, as they're playing songs, I had some of the artists backstage. So I'd be like, I'd be like, uh, I'd look at him. I go, I'd be like, I go nice and smooth. I would just like what text one of them, nice and smooth. And then they dropped nice and smooth, nice and smooth. Ran out and did some songs, and then so it was playing like a mixtape. So it yeah. wouldn't be like, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, nice and smooth. Right. Was, there was no stopping. It was just a continuous flow. I had Lisa Lisa there. I had Positive K. I had um, I had Lord Finesse there. Mel was there. Uh, Do people kind of trip off of your hip hop backbone, like how hip hop you are? Yeah, I think some people don't know, right? Or they just think I'm like a casual or something, you know? Like I'm just a fan, and I'm like, no. And then people go, "Oh, he's a celebrity DJ." I know I did that before no, I was doing comedy. That. That's what you know. That. Do you get no recognized crazy. everywhere you go? No, no, no. If I did, they wouldn't have got offended at that store where I made fun of the kid's name. Yeah, that <laughs> is true. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Where do you get recognized the most? Uh, New York, Toronto, uh, Toronto, obviously, Canada, anywhere in Canada, obviously, it's my hometown country. Um, but New York is real good for me. And New York's you... my favorite place in the world, though. Nothing really? personal, LA. I just can't leave. Right. Two what? baby mamas, you can't go. Uh, did you feel that earthquake this morning, by the way? No, nah, I didn't. I heard I did. about it. I felt it. I was laying in bed. In Malibu this year, right? It was in Malibu, but I felt it at my house, and my wife had just gotten up to go to the bathroom. I'm like, damn, bitch, did you just. Because <laughs> <laughs> the bed went boop. <laughs> Hey, hey, man, so you're you're married now. Yeah. All righty. Were you married before? Is this your second marriage? Or? Second marriage. The first one was only a uh, trial. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And when the free trial expired, we got out of it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> hey, man, did you think that you would get married again? I didn't. Right. I didn't think I'd get married again. I know I won't get married again again. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is it. You know, this is ride or die. What man. kind of husband is Russell Peters? I think I'm a sweet guy. Really? I think so. Why? <laughs> I, I like, I don't know, I like to surprise women. I like to do things that you're not expecting, like, you know, just randomly come home with some flowers for you. I heard nice. that. You know, like, at least once a week you need flowers. I, I feel like that. a woman needs flowers. And these aren't, uh, I feel bad flowers. No, right? no, 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 no. Okay, these, these are real are, flowers these are like, from the heart. Uh, the best ones are like when you pull up at a red light and the guy's right there and I'm like, oh, this is perfect. I don't even have to get out of the car. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like see how God works. Convenient flowers, even yeah. better. Yeah, you like see how God works. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. All right. So you sensitive? I I'm sensitive. Nah. How do you being that you've been a comedian before you met your girls, your queens, right? Mm -hmm. and, and your wife now. Do you ever say something on stage or in an interview that would get Oh yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. exactly. I, Get them I, I said something once, and I thought it was funny, and I called my wife and, and told her, and she hung up on me. Mm. And I was like, but it, it was funny. She was missing the point of the joke that, I mean, I didn't want to say it because I don't want to get in trouble <laughs> right, twice. Right, right. <laughs> I'll tell you off air, but. <laughs> Man, I remember, dude, and I don't know how comfortable we, we're going to talk, but I remember at my birthday party, I think you came with your ex. and you baby together, your, your baby mama at the time. Yeah. Of so still, still, still the baby yeah. <laughs> But mean, I remember, yeah. dude, you had said something. Oh, yeah, I remember what I said. Yeah, and I was like, you know she's here, right? <laughs> you know Did I say it on stage? No, but it was no. like, she. do you remember what he said? Yeah, I remember. She was, was like, like oh what, do, what, what was it? Do you remember? Kardashian? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, what did he say? I think he compared it to a Kardashian. No, no, no. I said because she used to double Kim on set, like she, like oh. she would be the stand-in till Kim got there. And then I walked up to Chloe and uh, Courtney, and I was like, "Hey," because um, I'm friends with Tristan. I said, "I texted Tristan first. I go, you cool with your baby mom?" He goes, "Yeah, go say what's up." I go, "All right." So I walk up to uh, Courtney, uh, Chloe, and I go, "Hey, I'm friends with Tristan. My name's Russell. I'm from Brampton." She goes, "Oh, nice to meet you, it's Courtney." I go, "Hey, how you doing?" I go, "My." Uh, my girl over there, she used to uh, double your sister. And they look, and I go, well, now she's double your sister. <laughs> but... <laughs> and then I go, and then I did this and went, look that way and laugh. I'm walking away. <laughs> and I pointed and I walked away. <laughs> hey, man. But I remember my wife was like, oh, my God. I was like, laughing. yeah, man. Like, this dude, no holds barred, man. Remember ASAP Rocky was there, and he had just gotten out of jail from Sweden. You said something to him, too? Because I, I got on stage. Remember, I got on the mic and go, uh, hey, uh, Rocky, we just got you an endorsement deal with Volvo. <laughs> no. <laughs> what is I, I, I don't Volvo is Swedish. Oh. Ah. <laughs> See, that, that's why you got them stamps in your passport that we don't have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know what I'm saying? I forgot Americans don't know about geography. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> You fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah. yeah you fucking idiots. You know? hey, you I just gotta, forgot that they You got to excuse yeah. them, man. Hey, hey, man, that's who I work with. I just yeah. wanted you to have a good setup. You know, and, and then it worked You're Armenian. Energy. You should know things. Hey, right. you're for big setup. Yeah. Right, yeah, we're just trying to say. It was you in up. an Armenian hall. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your birthday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was your cousin Hovick's. Uh, right. Hovick. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a cousin named Hovey? I do. Yeah. <laughs> wow. She has an Uncle Sarkis. Hey, yeah. you know him? <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh, you have a Marco Sarkis, too? Yeah, Sarkis. Hovey is the most common Armenian. Voskin. I have a neighbor. You have a neighbor named Voskin. Yeah. And about seven cousins named Harmon. <laughs> right. That is There so it true. is. All righty, there it is. Russell Peters' AI is affecting everything. Mm -hmm. Do you think AI will affect comedy? Like, you could sit down and say... Write me a joke about such and such, and then punch it up. I I don't know. I've I've not thought about that. We're we're really fixated on artificial intelligence, and we got to start yeah. focusing on natural stupidity. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Hence, what they just you know didn't know that bubble was from. Why don't yeah. you get some AI to teach you some geography, ladies? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> yeah, but you're starting to see it now, man. Where it's like, okay, even in the last few months, it seemed like this AI stuff is everywhere. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, they, they've been warning us about it for yeah, years. Yeah, but now it seemed like, man, now it seemed like, you know, like, it feels you heard like those that those verses way. that they do? Like, <clears throat> they had Biggie do, uh, do you hear, there's a version of Biggie doing Shook Ones yeah, that AI, AI created. Mm -hmm. it Can you listen amazing. to that? I did. I was yeah. like, this is incredible. <laughs> hey, man, and I heard one, like, Tim, Timbaland did a Biggie one. I heard the, uh, the Kanye over, it, it was a good day. Like and even now, it was the remix of uh, Scissors. Uh, that uh, uh, Kill what's, Bill? yeah, Kill Bill, and it was her and was it Doja? Mm -hmm. Doja Cat. And I asked my wife, I said, "Is that real or is it AI?" And it was real. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta start asking, dude, what am I listening to? Yeah, well, we already gotta ask what you're listening to because the, the, with all that, um, what's that stuff they use the uh, auto tune? Auto -tune. Nobody sounds like that anyway. Yeah, but when you hear and now everybody uses it. Remember, it was one time somebody used it. Now everybody's doing it. Like, and that's what Timberland said. Annoying. And he was like, you know, at one time people were, you know, afraid of, you know, they were hesitant about, you know, auto tune. But auto tune did kind of change the texture of music for me, and not in the greatest way. No. And so now when I look at this AI stuff, I'm like, man, you know, like when you say Biggie doing shook ones. Yeah. Like, that's something that you live in your head. Like, man, that would have sound crazy. Now you're hearing it. You know that um, that song, Doing It, that LL did, mm -hmm. was originally, the beat was for Biggie. They're doing it, doing it. No. Yeah. So. Um, oh, no. Did they I, AI that? No, no, oh, no. But, but the, no, the original beat was sent to Biggie. And I forgot the dude's name. I, I've, I He's good friends with Finesse. And they talk all the time. We talk all the time. But. He had he has a version of Biggie rhyming over that, Ooh. not singing doing it, but right, he right, has right. a version of Biggie. He can't find the tape. Oh wow! Oh damn! So he's got Biggie rhyming over that, but for some reason, LL heard the beat too and wanted it, and goes that's and that's why it was like um that's why they're saying go Brooklyn, go, go Brooklyn. Brooklyn. That's I don't, and I'm like that's how the only way you weren't gonna give LL a go Brooklyn beat. He's from Queens, you right? Know? 
But that's why that's why that's playing in the background because it was originally for Biggie. Hey man, now when he find the tape, people gonna be like, "Oh, that's AI." Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what that's what. Well, he could now just do an AI yeah. version. Hey man, when I said about writing the jokes, it almost looked like it sparked something in you. No, I, I was like, that'd be interesting right. to see what it comes up with. <laughs> Is this writer's strike affecting you in any way? No. no. In the industry don't give a shit about me. <laughs> hey, 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 man. hey, other than being on the Neighborhood one episode. Um, <laughs> I mean, not this one, Cedric. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Neighborhood. Yeah. Hey, man, do you do you go to any of that stuff like Oscars, nope. uh, award shows? Nope. like? If they asked you to write on a show right now, because obviously the writers are striking, would you? No, because I don't know how to do that. Oh. Mm. Like, I don't have that ability to see what you're doing. You're transcribing. Mm-hmm. Even. I don't know what you're doing, but yeah. it looks like you're doing something good. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's like, I can't do that. She just do, like, type I don't in have, ASDFJKL semicolon yeah. ASDF space JKL. Yeah. I don't have that focus to like sit mm. there. Like, I got ADD. How do you write your jokes? Mentally. Really? I, I freestyle them on stage, and then I go, ooh, I like that. I'm going to do that again. Do you record also, or nah, you just lock it in? I lock got it in. That I, I want to try that again. Because I have a, you know, I said something yesterday. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine. He's a comic. He's in a wheelchair. He's in, uh, oh, in no. Arizona. And, you know, he's he's been born that way. He's uh, But he's funny as hell. But we were talking, and he was, like, complaining about this club, comedy club because they, they, they only had stairs. They didn't have a ramp. And I go, he goes, you know, I'm special needs. I go, you ain't special needs. You got basic needs. Right. Your needs are basic. You need a ramp to get on stage. That's kind of a basic need. You want to get on stage, it's a basic need. I go, matter of fact, I'm special needs. The rest of us are special needs. You mm. can't have gluten. You are lactose intolerant. Now you got some special needs. Mm. These guys have regular needs that they just need met. Hey, We've Russell. been playing the game wrong. Russell, want to thank you for coming into the neighborhood, man. Wait, let's just talk about these dates we got coming up yes, again. Yes, uh, we got the, uh, it's a big weekend that weekend. June 16th. Uh, f- uh, Friday, June sixteenth, I'm at the Win in Vegas. Yes, sir. Saturday, June seventeenth, I'm at the Long Beach Terrace in Long Beach. Yes, sir. And then uh, Sunday, the eighteenth, I'll be at the uh, Civic Center in San Diego. I heard that. So you're keeping it what we call a uh, local, correct? By your standards, especially, bro. Yeah, and I'm driving to all these places. Are you? Yeah. You driving to Vegas and then Vegas to Long Beach? I'm gonna drive Long Beach to the San- why? Yeah. Well, how else am I gonna get there? You're driving like hands on the wheel. Yeah, driving. yeah. I don't like. Do you enjoy driving? driving? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Why? I'm trying to incriminate myself. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> yeah. When's the last time you've been in the DMV? Uh, not not in a while. But I got somebody. Yeah, exactly. You know, I got some people. <laughs> when was the last time you got pulled over? That's been a long time. Yeah. Do you shop for yourself? Like, do you go into like yeah. Ralph supermarket and shop? Yeah. Yeah, see, Russell Peters is just like us. Yeah, yeah like man. I wore this. They were like, I like that. I go, I was, at, I went to Camarillo Outlets, the Fila. <laughs> Fila Outlet had 30% off. Yeah. And after I bought everything, goes, you know, if you come back Memorial Day weekend, everything's 50% off. I go, you motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. After you got your receipt <laughs> yeah, in your hand. Yeah. I heard that, man. Yeah. Do you shop by yourself? Yeah. I, Do you cook, Russell? No, not nah. at all. Not even. You're not going to starve. Can you Do make I look breakfast? like I'm starving? Mm. But uh, can you cook something? Yeah, I mean, I can make omelets or pancakes right. or something or bacon. Do you have a chef? No, nah, no. Nah. I heard that. No, nah, I have a microwave. I got, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. I got a box of mini wheats. Yeah, yeah like, we got this thing called Postmates and Uber Eats. No, now I don't even there. have those apps because nah. I, I don't like people handling my food like that. I heard that. You know, you don't want her cousin dropping off your food. <laughs> hey, bro, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bro, your uh, French fries are getting cold. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah the sticker's broken. Hey, Alper, are you done with that? I want to eat it. I... Hey, man, are, do you consider yourself a simple guy? I think I am. Yeah. I'm a simple guy, but I like nice things now and then. You know? I like simple things. Right, I, right. I, I'm, I got, like, white trash food buds. Right, food right, taste, right. You know what I mean? Like, like they, I just saw something on TV saying about cold, Golden Corral. I was like, damn, I want to go back to Golden yeah. Corral. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I want me some meatloaf. You, know? yeah. <laughs> you some of them big ass dry biscuits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is delicious. Yeah. And what about when you're ex- extravagant? What do, what do, you, what will you spend money on? Uh, I'll spend money on food. Right. Like, I, I, you know, I like Joe's is my favorite restaurant oh. in Vegas. Mm. You know Joe's? No, I don't. At I Caesar's. Think... Oh man. Really? Yeah, well, if you go there, get the Madagascar go. shrimp. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're like they're like this big. Oh, that sounds crazy. expensive. And they're delicious. Oh, that's expensive as shit in there, but it's yeah. good. 
All right. Well, hell, when next time you're in Vegas, like when, when I'm eat? there too. Yeah, I eat. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. Let's get you fed. <laughs> right, right, right. Me and Ty were looking at you through the window. I said, you know, when Big Boy dies, his skeleton's going to look exactly like, like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I go, me and him, they're not going to know who wow. we were. I don't know how this is. You know, yeah. I don't, but at least I think I'll be around a little longer because at one point, everybody was going to Paul Bear me. Oh, you yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Now I probably made Paul Bear some of y'all. Oh shoot! Yeah, man. Shots fired! Shots fired! Yeah, we look, but we all looked at you. Um, <laughs> yeah. if, if you were to pick one in the room that's going to be next, who would you pick? I mean, I'm not pointing fingers or anything, but I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, man. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. too small to be my weight. <laughs> Oh man! Hey man, he's about to have his first baby, man. Yeah, he's about oh, to have his son. congrats! Yeah, no, not oh, him, not no. him. My girl is him and his girl. <laughs> Wait, are you Mexican? Yeah. yeah. Wait, how old are you? Uh, you should be a I'm grandfather there. by right. now. Yeah, right. thirty-six. Wow, that's late. Yeah, I know. Yeah, wow. But look at him too. Who's gonna lay down with that? <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I mean, I have a pug, so I get it. You're cute. <laughs> yeah, in its own kind of way. You know what I'm saying? In its own kind of way. way. What's the baby do? Uh, July, July eighth. Do you know? Do you know the gender? It's a boy. Yeah. Well, uh, what, you don't know what the child's gonna pick, but um, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You gotta say the sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The sex. A yeah. Male. Hey man, you know it's bad when your your girl nicknaming for you. You, know you got a name picked out? Uh, no, not yet. She, gotta, she has some names in mind. Not, uh, she wanted to name the baby. Oh, we probably won't say it on Yeah, she has a yeah. couple of names in mind, and I'm just like, man. Eh, you don't know. like them? No. Is she Mexican, too? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. At least you'll be coordinated on that. Well, mm. no. She, no I, I, don't, really. I don't think she, she's even going with like a Hispanic name or Mexican yeah. name, which I want. But Yeah, you should. He should what's, well, well, his last name will be, right? Yeah. Well, that's at least a good start. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. You know, I My mean, he's got something. Whose last name is he taking? It's going to be mine. You sure? Yeah. yeah. Did you have that conversation with her? Yeah, but that's the father's. It's always the father's name. Not really. right. Yeah, I mean, if he stays around, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any advice for raising kids? Uh, oh, no, shit, don't man. ask him. <laughs> too, late. No, no, too, late. <laughs> too late, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, why ask me now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> you wanted to be the U.S. in Afghanistan. You <laughs> took too long to pull out. So. <laughs> So, so have it. There it is, Russell. Thank you for America. coming into the neighborhood, my hey, brother. Thanks for making me come. Wait a minute. <laughs> and him, and him, and him. <laughs> Russell Peters in the neighborhood, big boy neighborhood. Big boy.